can we um, give more introductions? Whoever's yeah. next. Nicole, you want to start us off? Yes. Hi, my name is Nicole. I'm a peer mentor with Bridges Hill Community College, and I'm a biology major, and I was transferred to UV to be a visiting professor of physiology and neurobiology major. Great. Thanks, Nicole. Chili, do you want to go next? Yeah, hi, I'm Chili. I'm also one of the STEM peer leader here. My major is animal biology, and I'm planning to transfer to UC Davis. Okay, and let's go with Luke next. Uh, my name is Luke. Um, I'm coming into Kenyatta, and I'm going to major in computer science. Very good. Very good. Thanks, Luke. And Ksenia? Hello, so I'm a middle college student, and I was just curious about the STEM and the faculty, so that's why I'm here <laughs> right now. Very good, very good. Thank you. And Natalie, welcome. Can you introduce yourself, please, Natalie? Oh, there she is. She's uh, typing hello. Oh, okay. What's your major, Natalie, just so, so we can know? Computer science, excellent. You're in the right place. <laughs> and then finally, I want to let Ada introduce herself. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ara. I work in the Learning Center, and I'm responsible for, responsible for the graphics um, in the Learning Center, so at the Colts, the Colts Con. Um, yeah, so I'll be jumping all over the place um, to record and stuff. So if you see me, don't mind me. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. And just a reminder, please uh, enter your first and last name in the chat. That way we keep track of attendance if you haven't done so already. Thank you. Take it away, Professor Hoffman. OK. Um, I enter, just entered my name in the chat. Ah. Uh, <laughs> um, well, welcome, everyone. Our, our goal this afternoon is just to get some basic ideas about computer programming. And um, perhaps you have already done something, and perhaps not. And I want to start out um, kind of checking about uh, checking up on people's backgrounds. And um, so if you go to the chat box, does everybody know how to find that chat box? If you go down to the bottom of the screen, right, there's uh, a bunch of things that are, are, just move your mouse down there, you'll see chat, right? And if you click on that, um, then you can go to the chat box. And uh, another thing is uh, on the bottom there is something called, whoops, reactions. And uh, reactions have a couple things. There's like thumbs up and I think a shake. There's sometimes there are more things, but uh, I guess that's all I see right now. So um, if you've had, uh, if you've had a, a course or uh, somehow got familiar with computers in terms of programming not I mean we're all familiar with computers we surf the web we do this we do that we do a lot of things with computers right um, our phones are our miniature computers these days and they're they're very very powerful in fact uh, we still some people like me still call them phones but a lot of people call them mobile devices because they're much much more powerful than phones and we know that we use them for all kinds of, of purposes right so um, can I get a thumbs up and again, you can do that by just going towards the bottom of the screen, finding reactions there. And uh, if you click on that, there's a thumbs up. And so a thumbs up if you've already had uh, some uh, more than just like, you know, I, I, I've heard of computer programming. If you have some idea of what it's about. Okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so uh, what I want to do is I'm going to send something through the chat and I'll give you some uh, details about how to use it. Uh, they're changing this all the time. And um, all right, I'm hoping everything is working right here. Uh, Let me... 
Okay, so um, everybody should see something in the chat box there. And if you, uh, I think you can double click on that and download it. Is it called mouse? Yeah, my, it says mouse.exe. Okay. That's right, that's Great. right. Thank you. Mine doesn't let me do that. I've never uh, received, oh, okay. I think mine's. How are we doing? Okay, then um, to run the mouse, if you click on the, um, it, it doesn't matter what version of Windows you have, if you click on the Start button in the lower left corner, and then um, you may have to click on All Programs at the bottom or just hover on it and scroll all the way down. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there are two possibilities here. Um, and this is not even, this is a, a school computer, so I'm not sure if it's the same as yours. Uh, so in that list of things that you see there, um, there should either be something that says Windows, uh, Windows system or Windows, uh, ah, very good, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Uh, I wasn't even thinking of that. Um, Uh-oh. Okay, so thumbs up if you have a Mac, please, again, so I can find out how many Mac people there are. Aw. Uh, I'm also... Just on my end, I don't know if anybody else is getting this. I'm getting a blue window. It says Windows protected your PC. And it has an option not to run it. But it has an option to run it, right? Or, or just not? It just says don't run at the end. You could just press more info and then it'll say run anyways. Oh, okay. Thank right. you. Okay. Anyway. Okay, got it. Thank you, Luke. Well, this is really bad. I have... Uh... <laughs> Well, not count, not counting Gonzalo and myself. Mm -hmm. um, I have three Macs there. Uh, okay, well, I can kind of demonstrate it myself, but that's boring, and that's not as much fun as mm -hmm. uh, as if you did it. Um, if you have the mouse, you can uh, you can follow along. I mean, you can do it yourself, but. Um, Okay, so can I get a thumbs up? I think two people probably could upload it. Uh, if you click on more, does it ask you to save it? How does it, what does it do? Luke, were you able to save it? Yeah. Yeah, I saved it, but when I try to open it, a screen pops up for like a second and then disappears. Right, you won't be able to do that. That's why you have to, okay, so um, click on the start button in the lower left corner of Windows. And then uh, somehow you have to get to the all programs part. And either, it's either gonna be called accessories right at the top or uh, way, way down, it'll be called Windows, um, probably Windows system. So if you click on whichever one it is, try, do, do you see accessories at the top? I have two people who are, are not on a Mac, right? Yeah. Um, so if you, do you see accessories at the top? Of where? Um, if you click on start. Yeah. And then uh, all programs or just get the list of programs, which maybe pops up automatically, depends on your version of Windows. Yeah. And then do you see accessories right at the top? Um or near the top? No. 
Okay. Then scroll all the way down to the bottom. Yep. And you should see some Windows things. Yeah. Okay. Um, what What do you see? Windows what? See Windows system? Uh, yeah. Okay. Click on that. Mm -hmm. And then what do you see under there? Do you see a uh, command prompt underneath that? Yes. With the black box? Click on that. Okay. I think, uh, Natalie, I think you have a, um, a Windows PC, right? Good. Uh, can you try the same thing? Click on start in the corner. And um, then maybe at the top you see accessories. Fortunately, not only do we have Mac and PC, we have Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. Who knows what's going on, right? And every everyone's a little bit different. And so, um, okay, you don't see it. Uh, so you don't have accessories at the top. Do you have, um, so you scroll down, do you see any windows, anything near the bottom? She says okay, that. good. Um, okay, then uh, if it's, um, do you see Windows system as well? Sorry, it's Windows system that I'm really interested in. Good, click on Windows system. And underneath that, do you see command prompt? It's a black box. Good, click on that. All right, now Gonzalo, sorry about this. Um, it's very slow getting going here. Okay. When uh, when you tried to save it, did it ask you, did you get a normal kind of box where it says, where do you want to save it kind of thing or did it just save? No, it started running it and then it kind of disappeared. Right, because it won't run. Right. Uh, you have to run it from the command prompt. Ah. Uh. Uh, oh, this is going to be very, uh, Luke, when you, uh, did it let you save it or it tried to run? It let me, it let me save it and then uh, I tried to run it. Oh, so you, you double clicked on it to run it? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Um, but it didn't run. Right, right, right. So did it get saved like in the My Documents folder? Do you know where it got saved? Uh, I saved it onto my, de my desktop. Onto your desktop, okay. Um, that makes it gonna make it a little bit complicated. Uh, all right. Okay. So you might need to just share your screen so you can. I, I think I'll just do that, but that's, you know, that takes away <laughs> all the fun because I'm doing fun out of it. I know. But everybody's going to have to help me. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's try that. All right. Um, Okay, can you make me a co-host? Yeah, I already did make you an alternate host. Um, let me double check. Let's see. You should be able to share. Okay. Yeah. No, it says host, host disabled yeah. uh, participant screen sharing. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Try clicking the Make arrow it. next to the share screen, Gonzalo. Yep. Got it. Okay, you are the host now. Okay, right. All right, great. Thanks, Joey. Okay, uh, so hopefully everybody sees my my command prompt, and um, all right. Let me push that up to the corner here. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, 
a minute here. It's not uh, cooperating. All right. Okay, so um, the, the plan here is there's a mouse in a maze. And as I say, it's going to be not uh, as much fun on my screen. Um, let's see if that works. Uh, I think that's probably better, but still not not as, as good as it would be. Okay. Um, so the idea here is, is that there's a mouse in a maze. And um, for now, we just play with the mouse. And later on, we'll have to see what exactly we figured out and what happened here. But um, so the mouse is, is in the maze. The mouse is the little arrow in the lower left-hand corner. And um, if the mouse makes it up to the square in the upper right, the mouse has escaped from the maze. So um, so the mouse thinks it can complete them. It says the mouse thinks it can complete the maze in eight moves. Uh, the mouse, is he's a mouse, okay? So he's not all that smart. And um, in order to get out of the maze, of course, he wants to get to that upper right-hand corner. Um, but the problem is he can only go to the right. Uh, that's all he can do. And he can turn around. And when he turns, he turns towards the right. So that's all he can do is turn around one time to the right. So right now he's facing to the right. If he turns one time to the right, he's facing down. Then you can turn him one more time to the right. He'll be facing left. And one more time to the right, he'll be facing up. Okay, so that's all how he knows how to do. And he can move. And if you if you tell him to move, he moves straight ahead. Um, okay, and that's what it says in the little paragraph there. Um, okay, so the poor mouse says, help, I'm a mouse trapped in a maze with slippery walls. So he can't even climb up the walls. All he has to, all he can do is go where you push him. And so it says, what should I do? It says, um, I, uh, please tell me to move or turn or quit. So um, at this point you would be typing, but now I guess it's just gonna have to be me, but we'll pretend my fingers are connected to, uh, to your brains. So if somebody can tell me what to do, uh, we'll start out here. Get this mouse out. You can see my screen on the left half of your screen, right? Yes. Okay. So what should the little mouse do? I think move should be first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we can find out where he is. Let's see. Uh, if we say where, he'll tell us where he is. Okay. Anything else? Move. Yes? Look left or turn left. Okay, if to turn left, we, we can only, okay, we can do a turn. So there he is, he's facing downward. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh. He always just turns to the right, that's all. Remember, he's a mouse, okay? He's a, uh, he, he's, he's on a par with our artificial intelligence that we have these days. Uh, uh, there was, I'm trying to think, we have an echo device at home. You know what, what that is, right? You, you talk to it and it can tell you news and sing songs and all kinds of things. And so um, I'm trying to remember what my son-in-law and I were both talking to it. Of course, we're different people and we couldn't make it do the right thing. And it, it totally misinterpreted it, right? So the mouse is not even up to that level. He, he only knows move and turn and of course, where to see where he is. So, um, and when he turns, he only turns right. That's all he can do. He's very, very limited. So uh, what should we do next? Well, at this point, it's probably only turning, right? So. Yep. Okay, let's try to turn him then. Turn two times. Okay, and one more. Okay, any ideas? Move. What should I, I'm sorry. Move. 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 And then? Move again. And? 
Move again. <laughs> uh, and we only have eight, right? So mm. did, did I uh, spell something wrong? Oh, where? Where? <laughs> okay, he's okay. His little mouse brain didn't get that because I he only knows those few things. What now? What? Move more. Okay, and then um, turn. And then move to more signs. Okay. Ah. Uh, oh. Wait, it, it worked? Yes, yes. It doesn't count the turns, right? It only counts. Ah, okay. And so it took us eight, so we are we're good. And um, so we're the we're the favorite, all of us are the favorite people of the mouse. Um okay, so that is is the idea. Uh just a second, sorry. Okay, so um, the point there, and, and we'll we'll kind of try to put this together a, after we try a little bit more. Uh, the point there was, and I forgot to say that you you could there's no top on the maze, and there are no walls. Yeah. So if there are no walls and no top, that's why we could easily do this. Um, let's try this again. Just a second here. It, it always complains when I try these things. Okay, so now um, the maze is a little more complicated. Uh, we should try not to run the mouse into a wall. Um, he'll get upset if we do. He'll recover, of course, but he'll be a little upset if we make him hit the wall. Um, so, uh, but same situation. All he knows is move and turn and where. So let's see if we what we can do here. Can I can I get some help again? Move. You should move. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you have to individually like put move each time, or can you say like move four and then move? Four? Nope, nope. He he's a very limited mouse. You can only say move, but you can always ask him where he, at least for now anyway, you can ask where he is. I'll move three more times. Okay. And then turn three times. Okay. And then move two. And then turn um, three times again. And then move. <laughs> <laughs> And turn three times. <laughs> and move. Nope. Yep. Okay. There he is. Right, he's facing down now, right? Is that the nose hitting the wall? <laughs> that that's the nose pointing to the wall. Pointing to the wall. Okay. So yeah. it's turn, and then if it's turn, then it turns to the right. So. Right, turns to the right. Okay, and then? Okay. <laughs> Move three times. Move. Uh, turn. Move. Turn. Move. Turn three times and then move. Turn, move three times. <laughs> uh, turn, turn, turn. Okay. Yep. And then move after that. Okay. Oh. 
Oh no, it was limited. What happened? Or did it finish the maze? Yeah. yeah. Can, oh. can you, you can see, right? At the bottom it says, right. um, yay, you saved me. It took you uh, oh, okay. minutes and, and uh, you're my favorite person in the whole world. I hope I can see you again. So um, right. yeah, he's, he, he's a, a very friendly mouse. Um, and so, so, okay. So now we've, we've tried this. Um, it gets a little, we can make it a little more complicated. Uh, it's, so right now you can see, you can still see there's no top on the maze. Um, at the next level, it puts a top on um, and the mouse has a little light on his back. And so um, we start to not be able to see the walls because there's a top, but there's a light on the mouse's back. And so you can tell where he is. You have to remember quite a bit about what's happening at the moment, which direction he's facing. Um, and, and normally I would, uh, as I say, if we are doing this, uh, we, we would work on this and, and in fact, we can try it a bit. Let's see what we have here. Uh, let's see, just a second. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see what's going on. I forget. I think at this level. Okay. Uh, we just know where the mouse is. Um, we can't see. You can't see the wall, so we don't even know the little um, plus signs. I guess they are are there to remind us that those are places where the mouse could turn. Uh, but we we of course we know the mouse is facing to the right, but we don't really know much else. And so. Um, and, and again, the walls are not seen by us, right? So there could be walls. And what we're gonna have to do is, is we're just gonna have to move the mouse around and kind of perhaps hope a little bit, um, but see what we can do. Um, any ideas? Let's try to move first. Okay. Oh no, there's a wall. <laughs> there's a wall, oh no. <laughs> Ready. It's, it's, it's hard to tell, right? We're just, we're just moving the mouse and we're taking our chances. Okay. So one thing we know is, um, and, and I'm sorry, I don't have a, a uh, I think I could just a second here with, uh, with the tools. Oh, uh, hmm. am I a co-host? Yeah, you're the host actually. Oh, I am the host. I made you the host, yeah. Uh, what happened to the annotate tools? Hmm. Are they somewhere else? Annotate. There are some tools. Is it under view options or? Uh, okay. Hmm. Where would it be under? It usually at the top. You see where it says your screen sharing? Yes. Okay. Um, above that, it says mute, stop video, security, participants, new share, and pause share. And then there's more. In between pause share and more, there's something usually that says annotate. Hmm. And I can draw on the screen. And uh, when I teach, I have that option. Oh. But it's not there. Okay. Um, I don't really have any tools for drawing on the screen. Uh, I'm surprised. Let's see what else, what it says. Uh, Using enhanced encryption, reading information. Yeah, I don't see it on there. Hmm, I'm just looking to see if it's somewhere else. Hmm. And I was hoping maybe it would be Speaker, in the yeah. chat box or participants. And I know I don't, I don't see it anywhere. Uh, Not in the chat box. Oh, wait, let's see what, what happens. Here. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Nope, I was trying to, Morris says rename me. 
Uh, that's all I can do. Well, what, what I wanted to do, let's see. Um, would, this, it come, would it come up if you stop sharing and maybe it, that'll reset it or? I can try that, let's see. Let's see what happens. I was hoping it would come up under the advanced sharing options, but it's there are some advanced sharing options, but it didn't come up there. Uh, I think I'm out of luck. I don't think it's going to help. I think I'll just share my screen again. Um, uh, Okay, let's see. Uh... I'm drawing the maze on the paper. Will that help? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I wanted to do. But um, sorry, you have to do that. I was trying to use technology. No, to okay. Help. Okay, but but yes, that that's good. That's good. That's very good. All right, so let me share my screen again. Let's get the mouse back. He's probably lonesome. He's been waiting for us for so long. Um, it's, it says, okay, so what, what I wanted to do was, was exactly what you're telling me. And, and I wanted to draw a little bar there on the side so that, um, so that we could see that the mouse was, uh, shouldn't go there, okay? But at least we know he's facing toward the right, right? It, you can see the mouse again, right? Yes. Right. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Um, so um, he, he said, just, just to kind of, uh, uh, recap here a little bit. It says, ouch, you sent me into a wall that hurt. And it says, I need to rest a while. And he did rest a while, but uh, we were quick. We, it took us too long to, to get back. And he says, I feel better now. And he wants to know what to do. I want to warn you a little bit about running the poor mouse into walls. Of course, we don't know anything. So it's inevitable. Unless we're very, very lucky, it's going to happen a few times. Um, every time he runs into a wall, he has to rest a little bit longer because, you know, he's he, he gets kind of tired out. So, um, all right. So we know he's facing to the right, and, and we know um, that there's a wall on the right. So um, now what should we do? Turn three times. OK. Uh, <laughs> it's in the chat box. Sorry about that. I have a computer that's re very reluctant to. Um, OK, now where is not going to help us a whole lot here. It'll tell us where the mouse is but it won't remind us that he's, he's pointing upward. All right. Okay. So now I think the mouse should move. Good. Okay. So um, we've made some progress, haven't we? He's, he's moved. Yay. <laughs> so let's try to move once more. Okay. Whoops. Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard to tell, right? There's a maze right. there. We just can't see the walls. We don't know what's happening. Okay. So now he's uh, rested. He said, uh, what should he do now? Let's try turning. Okay. And then move. Good. Okay, we've made progress again. Let's try to move again. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell, right? And, and this is really important. This is important to keep in mind because after everything, I'm going to ask us kind of to to look back at what happened, and um, we we want to see there's some connection here to programming, and I, I want to to see what that is. But we're using the mouse. He's going to help us kind of figure out what's going on. Okay. So what should I do now? Mm, let's try turning and moving again. Okay. Uh, how many times should I turn? Let's try turning once because we don't know if there's a wall okay. above. So now he's facing down, isn't he? Right. So you want me to move? Yes. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Okay. So now we know what to do, right? Right. So two turns and then move Good. up. Oh, he's still resting. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. So we should move up. Okay. We're moving along. Good. Mm, let's try moving again. <laughs> okay. Ah, good. Nice. 
Let's try moving once more. Wow. So now turn. Okay. So now he's facing to the right, right? Right. Then move. Oops. Okay. Move again. Okay. And then once more. <laughs> Two possibilities here, right? Okay, excellent, excellent. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Thank That's you very fun. much. Yeah, yes, yes, very good. Um, so, so now we rescued the poor mouse. All right. Um, all right. This, this, this is going a lot faster because of uh, because I'm doing everything. And um, usually, if you do it on your own, and, and you did a very good job here of. Uh, mapping this out on paper. That was a, a very good idea. Um, usually I don't have people do it all by themselves. I put them in twos and threes. And so of course it's kind of a community effort. And um, you, you know, while, while we do that, we kind of discover what works and what doesn't work. And then perhaps uh, we try it again just to kind of see what's going on. Um, so uh, there are several things here that are connected to programming. And I want to, uh, Oh, let's see what happens here. This is going to be very. Oh, now it does it. Everybody can see the whiteboard, right? Yes. See all those little things at the top, select text. Do you see all that? Or is that only on my screen? I don't see that. Okay. Do you see that, Gonzalo? Near the top, it says select text, draw stamp spotlight. You don't see that either, huh? Okay. Well, I, I, you know, I teach and I see this all the time, and I just kind of don't know what people see and what they don't see. Okay. I have a series of tools here. Oops. So what I want to do is I want to record. I, I want to ask us. Um, so what programming means is right, making the computer do certain things, and um, I want to talk about how we think this uh, this little mouse how we think working with him could be easier. What would be some things we could do that might make it easier? I'm trying to make him move several steps at a time. Okay. All right, so, uh, whoops. And then the same for turning, right? Okay, good, good. Okay, I'll just say times at once, right? Okay. Right. Um, okay, very good, Luke. Oh, I see Natalie said that directional orientation would help. Oh, oh. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, can you, uh, can you explain what you mean a little bit more, Natalie? Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Very good. So more flexible moving options. Okay, this is a good this is a good uh list here. Anything else? Like have it turn automatically when facing a wall. Okay. Uh, oh, I think you're tapping in between text. <laughs> uh, this happens all the time. My uh, mouse. I'm I'm on a laptop, and the uh, I, I hit the touchpad every now and then, and then it goes wild on me. Uh, Oh, all right. Well, I, I have to start over here with typing. Um, so, 
um, these are some some good things to talk about. So one thing about computer programming is there are many computer languages available. All right, as I talked about, I teach Java. Um, some two other popular ones at the moment are C++ and Python. Um, there are a load. There are probably two thousand, three thousand computer languages. There are quite a few. Quite a few. Many have. Uh, have gone out of vogue. They're not popular popular anymore uh, for various reasons. We keep moving towards languages that are easier and easier to use. As you say, turn automatically when facing a wall, um, allowed us to turn several times at once, and so on. All of the, the items we have here, um, we're, we're moving towards making them easier to use. Uh, we're always kind of a little bit handicapped because we're living in the human world and the computer is living in its own world, and it's it's a very very uh, huge gap in between. Um, okay, and and so one problem is uh, for one challenge for programming is once we learn a computer language, we're stuck living in that world, and so we're living in the world of the mouse. All the mouse can do is move and turn, and so we would like to move several steps at a time, but that's not an option. Okay, or we'd like to move forward and backward and that's not an option. So what we have to do, and this is, this is the challenge of programming, is to take the task you want to do and use the commands that are at your service, the commands that are available, the ones that we really have, and somehow tie those things together so that we train the computer to do what we want. And this is always the challenge. Um, the, the current idea of artificial intelligence which is uh, us talking to, as I say, Echo Siri, if you have an iPhone, for example, all of these things. Uh, there, there are quite a number of challenges there. For example, the first challenge is uh, going from what you say to what you mean. And, and I'm trying to remember what we said last night, and it was hilarious. We, would, we said, um, tell us about blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what it was. And the computer misinterpreted it and said, um, here's a song. By, and then it, it, it was whoever it was. And so uh, we said maybe, let's say, Knapsack. I'm looking at a Knapsack right here. And so the computer said, here's a song by uh, Max Smith. And so I repeated it very carefully, Knapsack. And the computer said, here's a song by Max Smith. And, and I'm, I'm ready to get violent here because I'm very upset. Um, you know, it's, it's not listening. And we have this problem all the time. These devices are, and uh, we have a, a number of different accents when people speak here, and um, it's very, very hard. Sorry? I said right. I was agreeing. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure everybody has the same, it's kind of frustrating. Um, and, and that's artificial intelligence. And, and again, the challenge there is we have this computer, which is incredibly limited, and I usually refer to them in, in class as being not that smart, because they are super, super limited. And we have to take within those limits, and we have to be able to make the computer do these wild things. Understand uh, speech. Here, here's here's how hard it is to understand understand speech. I get through those okay. All right. <clears throat> You're thinking, wow, they got this guy to explain stuff to us. He writes down sentences that don't even, that, that, I mean, who knows what he's thinking. Why did I write down those two sentences? Because the first one doesn't really make sense. Well, maybe I'm, t I'm sorry. Good point. Good point. But let's put it in context. I'm talking about pollution, so it's hard to wreck oh. a very nice speech. Okay. Mm. Anything else? It sounds similar. Right. Right. So if you say the first sentence, it's hard to recognize speech. If you say the second sentence, it's hard to recognize speech, right? If you, if you say it really fast, it, it almost sounds the same. It's hard to recognize speech. So it sounds very, very similar. And that's the first challenge for the, the computer, is to go from the spoken word to the pieces. All right. But even once it gets the pieces, it can there can still be a challenge since we're talking about understanding speech. Um, uh, 
uh, people don't say this very much anymore, but time flies like an arrow. Sometimes if you're doing something and you think you have a lot of time, maybe an hour or something, uh, all of a sudden you're just in, engrossed in what's happening. You're so excited and just enjoying it. And next thing you do, you look at the clock and you say, oh my gosh, an hour and a half has gone by and I thought it was only 15 minutes. And so time just flies along like an arrow, right? But here's another one. So fruit flies like an apple. Well, um, there's no fruit flying around here. These are little, little bugs and they're fruit flies and they like to eat apples. So that's the second challenge for the computer to understand. It has to put the pieces into place and make sense out of them. So it, it's quite challenging. It's quite challenging. And again, the, the, what we're doing as programmers is we're taking the commands we know in the language we have, Java, C++, Python, whatever it is, in those various languages, and we are trying to then put them together to get the computer to do what we, uh, what we would like to have it do. And so because of this, um, that, that's what the whole course is about. And we start with learning the commands. We, we learn them one at a time because they're a little more involved as we get through them. Um, and pretty soon at the end, we have quite a tool bag full of stuff. And we can actually then get it to do some pretty sophisticated things. Now, if you want the computer to drive a car or understand speech, all of these kinds of things, that takes a lot more than what we're going to learn in the class because we're starting assuming that, uh, you know, we're like the mouse. We know very, very little. And we can only do a few things. And as I say, we build, we build, we build. But that, that's the whole goal of the class is to start from essentially not very much and then add on, add on, add on until we ultimately have uh, some very, quite a, quite a strong tool bag full of stuff. And we can then uh, do the things that, that we need to do. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, one, one other thing I want to say that's, that I think the mouse is kind of like programming. Sometimes when we write a program, we think we're doing something really, really fine. And I wanna thank you, Ksenia, for uh, helping me out here. Um, as, as you're doing things, occasionally the mouse runs into a wall. And when you write a program, you can have a bug in your program. There's some kind of error. And so what you have to do then is you have to decide, you know, how can I solve the problem? And um, it's not, I mean, here, here the, the thing to do was make the mouse turn a bunch of times. Uh, but there was a lot of logic going on because at first we started out, we hit the wall. And then we said, well, now we can't go right. And obviously we can't go left or down because those are the outside walls. So we have to go up. So we were using a lot of thinking as well to, to plan the, the mouse's path through, okay? So um, of course that challenge, the thinking is, is what makes programming a bit of a challenge for us. So, um, so anyway, the little mouse, the, the point was here to, to give us some ideas about programming. And I got quite a number of, of quite a bit of advice here, move several times at once, uh, turn several times at once, more, uh, be able to move up, down, left, right, um, and, and turn automatically when facing a wall so that we're facing the right direction. And again, we weren't allowed to do these things, but we could, uh, the mouse has a method where he can learn as well. And so we could have asked him to learn something about, um, we could make something called, make a move called turn right. And the mouse could learn turn right or, or turn left, I mean. And the mouse could learn turn left. And he would know that means turn, turn, turn. And that would be like a left turn. So, um, you know, we, we can, we could do some things like that. Very good, thank you, Natalie. That's right, I'm sorry, I'm not always uh, paying enough attention to the, to the chat box here. Um, oh, I see, I see. So, uh, let me, uh, let me stop that. Let me stop the, the sharing here. And um, so my hope was that we, we had a chance to get some ideas about programming. It, uh, the first thing being that we have very, very few commands, limited. Um, at first, you might think it's a few. As you go on, you learn there are quite a bit more. 
but um, you get comfortable with them. And so you start to realize that these are the exact commands I know, and I can put them together to do a lot of things. Fortunately, computers are very fast today, and we can build uh, programs that do a lot of things in a very short amount of time. If you play video games, um, even watching you on this and you see my head, I, I you know, move as I talk, um, that is because the computer is so fast. In the early days, computers couldn't do that, couldn't do pictures, especially live video like this because they were too slow. So we're, we're able to do a lot more. And um, hopefully if, um, if you sign up for, if you study computer science, you will learn uh, the different kinds of tools, the different ways of thinking, um, how we think like people, which is really high level. We can understand, you can understand those sentences, all the things I wrote there, it's no problem for you. Um, and on the computer's level, it's it's so hard and, and how to bridge that gap. And that's what we will talk about uh, in computer programming classes. Okay, so I um, want to thank everyone for coming this afternoon. Um, the mouse surely enjoyed it. Hopefully you did. Um, and uh, hopefully we got some insights perhaps into programming and uh, how computers work perhaps and, mm -hmm. and how we go about making them do all the things we need to do. Okay. So thank you very much for, for coming. Thank you. And hopefully I see you in classes in the fall. Professor Hoffman, I just had a quick question. Um, sure. I'm wondering if uh, you could just give us a quick uh, kind of rundown of what kinds of careers the degrees and certificates at Kenyatta prepare you for? Um, computer science? If you yeah, know. I was going to say I can talk about computer science. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, with with uh, computer science, you can really go two different ways. Number one, you can get a, a degree in computer science yourself. So that means you would be a computer programmer. And there are many, many applications of programming. Um, you, you could you could go to a company and you could write a database or work on a database program. And this is a program that manages the company's data, for example, keeps track of their clients, their addresses, um, how the clients order, how much they typically order, um, and, and just, just managing customer relations. Um, one, um, another sort of thing, these, these are you know, ideas that work in the business world. Another possibility is one, one thing we have uh, right now with COVID-19 is at, at first they talked about a toilet paper shortage. And at one point they were talking about flour shortage. I think we've, we've come back from the flour shortage too. But and that's, that's flour, that you're baking flour, not you know, the pretty things that grow outside the, the window. Um, and, and so because of, of this, this is called supply chain management. This, this process of managing um, who's selling things to the store so the store has enough to sell back to us. So there are a number of ways you could go in, in the world of work. Uh, in, the, in the world of applying things to business. There, of course, is, is game programming um, and, and uh, programming like for uh, motion pictures, uh, movies, I mean, um, things like that. So those are dealing with animation and uh, a lot of ideas about computer graphics. Um, that would be another path you could take. Um, then you could go something that is like this, but a little bit different. And you could learn to program, take a few programming courses, but major in something related to programming, even unrelated, somewhat economics or, or um, some area of science, perhaps chemistry or biology. And then you can take your programming skills and tie those to your knowledge of chemistry or, or economics, whatever it is. And, and then that would make you good uh, in, in what, those areas because we all know that computers are not leaving, they're just becoming more and more involved in every single career. And so all of a sudden, and you might even write some, some fantastic program or become a programmer on a team that maintains uh, some kind of program that would help in, in these areas, okay? So there are quite a number of possibilities going straight into computer programming, which is what I did when I graduated from college. I was a computer programmer. Um, on, and, and of course, that was a few years ago, so that maybe the world was a little different than, the world of, of computers was a little different than. Um, and then, as I say, using computers as a support tool to a career in some other area. Thank okay. You. Was there like one other question or? Sure. Yeah. Does anybody have a question? So my friend, she was, she was really interested in attending the session, but she couldn't participate. Um, where can I find the recording later on? Yes, um, it'll be sent to me and I will post it onto the Canvas page. Okay, thank you. Sure. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Professor Hoffman. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes. Um, and again, so encourage all students to attend our last session, which is Cultural Wealth. It starts at 315.
Uh, so uh, yeah, go back on Canvas and you can find the link there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great yeah. afternoon. Appreciate it.